Well, hey folks, this is John with Ozarks Back Roads. We're back with you again. I'm in the woods today. Um, I want to talk with you a little bit about this uh, CF Moto, this Ibex 800T. Um, I stood here about three months ago. I had a thousand miles on this bike and I did a little review on it and I talked about the things that I really liked about it and uh, some of the things that I didn't like about it. So uh, today I'm going to do a 5,000 mile review, probably the last review I'll do on this motorcycle. I've uh, spent uh, quite a bit of time on it. I took it out west and lived off of this bike, tent camped off of it for about two and a half weeks. Went out to Arizona, uh, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, out in that area. And from south central Missouri here, I rode out and back. So I've got a pretty good idea here about this bike, what I've got. So stick around, we'll see if my opinions have changed after 5,000 miles on the CF Moto Ibex 800T. So the last video, we kind of talked about the spec of the bike. Um, the bike is designed by Kiska a uh, design group that does all of KTM's motorcycles. Uh, they're in Austria. Kiska's been doing KTM uh, motorcycles since 1992 or 93. They've done all of KTM's bikes. They do, they've done this bike as well. This bike has the KTM 790 uh, Adventure and Duke engine in it, the 799cc parallel twin. It's a very good engine, it's very snappy, and uh, it's a very high performance engine. It's got a high compression ratio, I think it's 12.7 or 12.9 to one. Pretty high compression. The, the, the motor with the high compression and the lightweight design of the engine it is a little vibey, a little pulsy in the lower RPM range. You don't want to lug this motor. Uh, you know, you want, to, you want to put a little bit of RPM on it and get it out of that vibey uh, that lower RPM range and then it is smooth as silk. It's a really lovely engine. Uh, I've, I've really grown to uh, admire this engine. We also discussed previously who CF Moto is. They've been around quite a while. They started out building uh, motors mostly, engines and transmissions for uh, other manufacturers back in the early 80s I think. So CF Moto builds the uh, 790 engine, 4 KTM. This bike, the frame, the engine, the, uh, the drivetrain, everything on this bike is pretty much KTM uh, 790 Adventure. Uh, the frame is built out of different materials. It's a heavier frame. It's built to carry uh, more of a load, more, to be more of an adventure uh, touring type motorcycle. So it's not as light as the KTM. This bike weighs 509 pounds. Uh, so that's, you know, the KTM is quite a bit less than that, but the Adventure is built for uh, high performance uh, off-road and uh, uh, and on road, but it's built to be light and fast. This is built to be rugged and durable, I would say, and it's still pretty darn quick. So this bike has uh, pretty much the same components you're gonna find in a KTM bike. The fuel injection and the ABS is by Bosch. Uh, we've got the same uh, tubeless wheels on this bike that come on the uh, KTM Adventure. Um, it's got cruise control, it's got a quick shifter, heated seats and grips. This bike has TPMS monitoring. You can monitor your, your tire pressure. It has a steering damper, um, a nice seven inch TFT display. It's a really pretty display with a couple of riding modes. So this bike doesn't have traction control. So it's similar to the uh, Yamaha Tenere, 700 Tenere. It doesn't have traction control. It also has, comes with a slipper clutch. This bike makes 94 horsepower and uh, 57 foot-pounds of torque. The fuel capacity on this bike is 19 liters or five gallons. Uh, the bike gets around 50 miles to the gallon, uh, a little more uh, depending on how you ride it. I've ridden it uh, 200, the, the longest I've ridden on a tank, it was 209 miles and when I filled up, at 209 miles, it held uh, 3.97 gallons, so four gallons. So I still had a gallon to spare. 
So about 52 miles to the gallon is, is what I've been seeing on average on this motorcycle. The front suspension on this bike, the KTM Adventure will have the, uh, the WP suspension. This bike, they went with a KYB, uh, Japanese suspension. It's a very good suspension. It's a 43 millimeter tube on, on these uh, forks and 160 millimeters of suspension travel, which is about 6.3 inches. So it's a little more than the, uh, say the V-Strom 650 XT is about six inches almost, 5.9. So it's got more than that, but it's not a whole lot. So you're not gonna be able to really uh, push this thing off road and, uh, and do a lot of jumps and stuff. You will find the, in, uh, the bottom of the suspension eventually. Uh, I will say that the, the bike is sprung very well. Uh, it's not soft. Uh, it holds up well off road. I've, I've yet to bottom the forks or the rear shock on this, but I'm not a real aggressive rider. I, I understand kind of how this bike, what it's designed for but uh, I'm sure I could find the, the bottom of the stroke on, on uh, the rear shock and the front forks if I really pushed it, you know, riding off-road through whoops and stuff and getting it off the ground. The, the uh, rear shock is also a KYB unit with 150 millimeters of travel. The rear shock is preload adjustable and uh, rebound adjustable. The front forks are totally adjustable, rebound, compression, and uh, preload. So you've got a lot of uh, adjustment there. I haven't touched the front forks. I think they're perfect. Uh, they're, they're not harsh and they hold up well off road. So that's really uh, all I can ask for. Uh, they go through the twisties really nice. There's no wallowing or anything. It's, it's a very good feedback. I just left them alone. And so far, uh, you know, it's been great. So as I mentioned before, the wheels are tubeless. We've got a 110, 80, uh, 19 inch on the front. And then we've got a 150, 70, 17 on the rear. So I've installed a set of, uh, of Midas uh, EO7 Plus uh, tires, 50-50 tires on this. I absolutely love these tires. Uh, the rear tire really digs good and gets good drive off-road in loose gravel or deeper gravel it does great and on-road these tires are pretty good you do get a little noise a little whine but it's not bad and uh, they stick good uh, in the twisties i've i've yet to have a slip uh, on-road or off-road with uh, the front tire on this bike it is really a good uh, combination so i'm going to keep these tires i've got about 5500 miles on the rear tire and uh, it's down about 50% uh, of the rubber it started with. I think it'll probably go another 1,000, uh, maybe 1,200. And the front tire has very little wear on it. It looks like it will uh, probably last through another rear tire. So that makes the value on the tires pretty decent. If I can get uh, two rears to one front, that helps uh, lower the overall cost of the tires. These tires are a little bit... Uh, a little bit expensive. I think the rear tire is about $200. The front tire, I don't remember. It's, it's substantially less than that, probably $130 or $40. But um, if I can get two rear tires to one front, why that helps reduce the cost as well. The bike has full LED lighting all the way around it. Uh, it has fog lights on the front. It comes with factory fog lights. The bike also comes with a center stand. Heated seat and heated grips uh, comes with those. The bike has a quick shifter. The windshield is adjustable. It goes up and down. Uh, I don't know how far it goes, but uh, it looks like about three inches, maybe 75 millimeters, something like that. We have uh, two USB ports up here on the dash that you can plug in uh, your phone or your, your uh, GPS or whatever. And then there's also a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter, American cigarette lighter style uh, socket on the other side. Bluetooth connectivity, you can do uh, turn by turn. If you Bluetooth your phone to the bike and pull up your maps, you know, get your route set, you'll get a turn by turn navigation on your display as, and, and then the, there'll be other information around it there to, that you might need. Also, uh, the Bluetooth uh, connectivity allows the bike to get updates over the air uh, via your phone. 
You can get uh, firmware updates for the bike. There's been an issue with this bike with the uh, fan controller. Uh, it it uh, faults the, the ECU, gives an ECU fault, and the fan wouldn't kick on at certain times. When you Usually when you're riding uh, slow in cities or uh, off-road where you're going slow, where the fan is cycling on and off, uh, some people were having trouble with getting an ECU failure and their fan wouldn't run. Uh, that's been uh, fixed with an update, uh, a software update. That happened just the other night for me. I got the notification on my app that I needed to uh, update my software. So I uh, connected my phone to the bike and hit a button that said upload the software. And in about five minutes, I had that new software and uh, the word on the street is that that has resolved the issue with the ECU uh, failure in the fan controller. So that's a good sign that CF Motos, uh, you know, they're looking after this, uh, their customers and they're gonna keep improving on this bike. So that's pretty much the spec on the bike. We've, we went through all that in the previous video. Uh, we'll just touch on all that again. Uh, I just want to talk about my experiences with the motorcycle and, and if my opinions have changed from the previous uh, review that I did after, after having ridden it uh, over 5,000 miles now and living off the bike for uh, uh, two and a half weeks out in the western U.S. You get to know your machine pretty good when you live that way. Traveling on this bike is excellent. The bike is very comfortable. Now I have the tall seat. I, install, I bought the tall seat. Uh, for this bike just to give me a little more leg room. It's like 30 millimeters or an inch and a half taller seat and that really helped me but I've got really long, I've got long legs for my height. I have a 33 inch inseam so that stretched my legs out and it, it really makes it more comfortable. It wasn't bad before but it's better now and I kind of like to be sitting up high, higher on a, on a bike anyhow. So that worked out good. The uh, seat is very comfortable. I would say that the stock seat, the, the not the high seat, but the seat that comes on it is, is a little more comfortable than this tall seat. Uh, I just, the tall seat to me feels like it's got just a bit of crown in the middle of the seat. And the stock seat was flatter and I thought it was more comfortable. They're both quite thick and, and have really good foam. They support you well. Uh, I've ridden this for over 10 hour uh, days on this and I don't have any trouble with the seat or really anything. I, I'm not sore. Uh, I can ride all day long and get off the bike and I, you know, I'm fresh. So that's pretty good, especially on a, on a mid-sized uh, adventure bike. Uh, they're not always that comfortable, but this one is really good. It has very good wind protection. Uh, actually, for riding where I was at this season out west uh, on that big trip, it has too good of wind protection. Uh, you don't get a lot of hardly any uh, wind on your legs, and this uh, windshield does a very good job. I have put a spoiler on it just to throw the air a little bit higher over my helmet. But uh, even without the spoiler, it's, it's pretty good. So this bike, I would say, is probably one of the best as far as wind protection and comfort for, for uh, traveling on. It's, it's really quite good. So having said all of that and how much I do, I do love this bike. It is, I'm very happy that I uh, purchased this. So if I lost this bike or something happened, I would go out today and buy this, this same bike again. I really like this bike. So I'm glad to see that CF Moto is, is getting some updates out there and uh, working on some issues on this bike and trying to improve it. That uh, uh, I feel good about that. Well, let's talk about a few things that I don't like about the bike. You know, no bike's perfect. If I ever find a perfect bike, that'll be the last bike I ever buy. It hadn't happened yet and I've owned a lot of motorcycles. But this one, uh, it doesn't have a lot of things not to like. The fueling, I talked quite a bit about the aggressive fueling, uh, the aggressive throttle mapping on this bike on the first uh, review that I did, the, the 1,000 mile review. So I'm going to say that after 5,000 miles, I've kind of come around to this, uh, this more aggressive fueling. Uh, I know what it's going to do and I, I kind of enjoy it. It doesn't have any snatchiness, you know, on and off throttle snatchiness. It doesn't have that issue. 
but it does it when you when you turn the grip it, it applies throttle pretty quickly but i've kind of grown to uh, enjoy that and it really makes the bike fun uh, to ride um, it's got two rider modes and in sport mode that's your most aggressive that's what i ride in most of the time when i'm on the on the road and stuff and uh, it, it's a blast uh, to ride in the twisties and stuff when you're wanting to hoon around uh, this this thing is really a hoot um, off road i'll put it in um, rain mode that 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 uh, reduces the aggressive throttle mapping and uh, it makes it quite a bit easier to ride off road it's difficult to ride off road in sport mode you really can't control the throttle to keep the rear uh, wheel from spinning up this KTM engine is uh, very snappy and it'll spin up on you, so you do have to be careful and it doesn't have traction control. So I would say that this bike is probably not a good choice if you're a new rider or if you're just uh, a new rider to off-road, maybe you're gonna start riding some off-road and, and you haven't done that much. I think I would go with a different bike, a bike with traction control that can help you out and, and get you off to a good start. There is still an issue uh, with the mapping, the throttle mapping that I don't like, and it is it surges at low RPMs. If you're in town or you're on a trail uh, and you need to go maybe uh, 20 mile, 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, and you're in third gear, say, and you're just holding a, just a little bit of throttle on it, uh, the bike does surge. It's got that lean surge. Uh, that's from uh, the meeting the carb uh, requirements, I'm sure, or the E, what is it, the Euro uh, 5 uh, requirements, the fuel, uh, the emission requirements, I guess. But um, I would like to see that improved. Uh, it is annoying. It's, it's not real bad, but uh, other bikes, you know, don't do that as much. So I think there's some improvement to be made in that respect. So to be honest, uh, I don't expect them to come out with a software update for this bike to fix that, um, that surging throttle. For a manufacturer to sell a vehicle in the United States, we have uh, CARB uh, requirements, which are emission requirements, and there's a lot of testing and, uh, that, goes, that goes into that to get a, to get a, uh, a model uh, cleared to where they can sell it in the United States. Well, if they're going to change the fuel mapping to, to uh, address the surging, I'm assuming they're going to have to go back through the, the, the CARB process uh, to uh, recertify the machine for, for sale in the United States. I don't see a manufacturer that would, I don't think they're going to do that. I think if we're going to see them uh, fix that issue, it'll be on next year's model. Or the model you know the model year after that or something like that it'd be on a new model not on the existing model i could be wrong but that's just my hunch i don't see them uh, going through all that process uh, just to fix a uh, a bit of a surging issue in the throttle mapping i think it'll it'll be on the next model there's one more thing that i don't like about this bike and that is pretty much it and that is there's an issue with uh heat uh, coming back on on my legs uh, I rode all the way from Missouri across uh, Oklahoma uh, West Texas New Mexico into Arizona I rode through some pretty warm weather uh, on that last trip and that heat coming back on my shins uh, at times was uh, it got it was pretty uncomfortable at, at times um, it seems to be predominantly the left shin the left leg that catches most of the heat uh, do get a little bit on the right but i did notice that uh, it seemed to be pretty much on the left uh, i've looked at the way the uh, the uh, the cowling dumps the uh, heat off of the radiators it they it, the cowling is designed to throw that heat around uh, your legs and i think it probably does but uh, in front of the the cylinder head you can see the radiator and there's nothing to keep that heat from the radiator coming straight back and wrapping around the engine uh, and, and coming right back on, on your legs. It, it isn't all directed out into the cowling to be thrown out. A lot of it's coming around the engine. And uh, I think that's what's happening uh, with the heat on the left leg. I think we're getting that right off the radiator. Uh, 
I don't know that there's a whole lot that can be done about that. The uh, KTM Adventure is the same way. The Duke's the same way. A lot of adventure bikes will put heat on you. Uh, I think all of them that I've ever owned uh, will do that. Uh, I wouldn't say this one's a lot worse than any others, but it'd be nice to have one that didn't heat up my shins, you know, but I don't know if that's uh, an issue that can be resolved. Well, that is my opinion after 5,000 miles on this motorcycle. Um, my opinions on the fuel mapping, on the uh, aggressive throttle have changed. I've uh, become a bit of a fan of that. I think it's, uh, for me, I'm used to it and I kind of enjoy it. I know when I came back uh, from that big trip on this bike, a few days after that, I jumped on my Tiger, my 800 XCX, went for a ride, and I kept noticing how the bike just wouldn't pick up. I just really had to, uh, to get on it to get it to, to pick, pick up and go. And all that is is just I got used to this throttle mapping. When I get on that one, it, it takes more twist and the, the engine isn't uh, quite as quick to, to pick up and go. It's not as, um, as eager as this bike is. This bike's really eager to go. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty fun to ride, uh, but I did notice the difference on the Tiger, but after I rode the Tiger for that day, by the end of the day, I, I really didn't think anything of it. Uh, it was just like it always was. So I, I want to just talk briefly about, you know, should you buy this bike? Well, that's a really hard question. I, I don't uh, suggest or or recommend that anybody buy any particular bike. It's not my place to do that. I don't know what, uh, what you, how you ride or what you want or, you know, that's a big, you know, that's a million dollar question. Uh, I'm still buying bikes, trying to find the perfect bike for me and it hadn't happened yet. And I've been doing it since I was a kid. So it's probably not gonna happen. But who's this bike for? Well, I would say if you're uh, somebody that's, not a, a beginner or a novice, somebody that's ridden a while, that's got some, some skills, this bike's great. Uh, you know, if you're gonna ride off-road, you kinda need some off-road chops to control the throttle on this. So it's, it's different than, say, the uh, Yamaha uh, Tenere 700. The throttle mapping's quite a bit more aggressive. So you need a little bit of experience off-road if you're gonna take this off-road. I would say, if you're just riding on road, uh, you don't have to be that experienced. The, it's only an 800cc engine, so it's not gonna rip your arms off, throw you off in the middle of the highway, but it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty lively motor and it's really fun. If you like carving twisties, this thing is great. It sticks to the road like glue. It's got the, the suspension is really good. It works uh, excellent in the twisties on, on uh, when you, you can push the bike, it doesn't wallow. You get really good feedback, turns in quick. It just sticks to the road. I really enjoy it uh, riding in the twisties. It is a blast to do. Uh, I'll be going out to Appalachia here in about uh, three or four weeks. And I suspect I'm gonna take this thing over the tail of the dragon a time or two. And uh, maybe we'll get some video on that and see how it goes. Uh, but like I say, it's not for everybody. The bike is not super refined. It, uh, it's got some throttle mapping issues, some, some surging. Uh, it's aggressive nature. So it's not uh, like a, a Triumph or a BMW. Uh, this is a new model, so it's got a ward or two, but overall, uh, it's a pretty good bike. Uh, the durability and the reliability has been spotless so far. Uh, the build quality, it's, I can't tell any difference in the build quality on this bike from any other bike. Uh, the components they use are all top-notch. Brembo brakes, KYB suspension, you got the, uh, the chassis and the engine. Uh, all from uh, the KTM Adventure. I see no reason why this uh, bike won't last as long as any other motorcycle if you take care of it. Uh, it's the same as any motorcycle. So for the money for this motorcycle, there is no competition. This bike sells for $10,500 in the United States right now. You cannot touch that with all of the stuff this bike has. Uh, there's no other model that even comes close to that. You're gonna spend uh, 3,000 or more 
dollars to get uh, the stuff that this has got on it, maybe $4,000. Uh, so there's, a, there's a, quite a bit of difference in the price point. So for what I paid for the bike, I can overlook a few warts. Well, that's kind of my take on the, uh, the 2023 CF Moto Ibex 800T. Uh, after 5,000 miles, I've, I've softened up a little bit. I've come around, and I really enjoy this motorcycle. I appreciate you all hanging out with me and checking out the, uh, the CF Moto, the Ibex 800T. It's uh, commonly known as the uh, 800 MT in the rest of the world. It's been out there for a while. Uh, it's all the same machine. I invite you all to come back and see me. We'll go somewhere and do something else. Until I catch up with you again, you all take care of yourselves. We'll catch you next time.